The WSOP and I meet up once a year. This year? WSOP, what's going on, man? Before we get into the hands from this session of 510 and sometimes 51020, I just need you guys to know that the WSOP told me he will be personally meeting you in the groin if you are not subscribed by the end of this video. So I'm just warning you, guard your castle, click that red button. Alright guys, this is where we are, and this is where we want to be, it's where all the beautiful people are. Oh, yeah. We're in the King's Lounge feeling like royalty. We're on the button, we've got six, eight of spades, and we're going to go ahead and raise. I make it $30, the small blind ends up calling, and we're going to the flop heads up. The flop comes down four, deuce, seven, rainbow. And uh, so we've got the gutter ball, plus we've got backdoor spades. I'm gonna continue for $25 and the small blind calls undeterred. We go to the turn, and the turn is a glorious nine of spades. We now have the open-ended straight flush draw, so our position has improved greatly. Now we get to fire all rivers as well. We've got this board pretty well locked up, and there just isn't a whole lot that he's gonna have here. Um, he may have a set is pretty much all we're worried about. I bet $75 he quickly folds and we've got chips to start the night. Next hand of the night we have ace queen offsuit under the gun. I make it 35 with 950 in my stack and I get two callers including the hijack who ends up being the main villain in this hand. The flop comes down queen 8-8. Eight, eight. I'm supposed to bet. I decided to check this since we're multi-way and I wanted to pot control. I still think I'm better off to bet the flop and then check the turn. But I decided to check and the hijack now decides to bet $35. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the call. And now we've basically turned our hand already into a bluff catcher. So he's either going to have flushes or an eight or potentially a queen. If he has a queen, it's likely worse than ours. So let's go into check call mode again and see what develops on the turn. I go ahead and check. He thinks for a little while and decides that he is not done betting. He's going to continue, and he bets $100. After he bets $100, uh, I don't have to think too long. I still have top pair. I'm beating flush draws. I'm beating worse queens, and so I'm going to make this call. I'm also beating some straight draws, like maybe a 9-10, 10 jack, uh, jack 9, things like that. Uh, so when the river comes down a jack, I'm going to check one more time. Uh, we're going to hope that he doesn't have something like queen jack or an eight and that he has a flush draw and maybe a queen that's worse than ours and he's going to slow down and check back. Unfortunately, he does decide to bet. He bets $300. So this is a rather polarizing bet and I'm just not going to get away from top pair, top kicker that easily. He's going to have enough bluffs to make the call and sometimes you just have to trust your gut. Oh, shoot. Ooh, that's nasty. Ooh. Looks like Bledsoe's out. They're going to bring in some backup. Brady, I give him two weeks. Two weeks and he's gone. He ends up having eight jack for the full house, and so we are no good on this one. This one's going to look a little bit familiar, but it's not the same hand. This is a little while later. Uh, I have ace-queen offsuit again under the gun. I make a raise to 35, and again, I get two colors. So we go to a flop of jack of clubs, 10 of spades, three of spades, so spade draw, but we have two overs, a gutter ball, and so we're gonna go ahead and bet this one for $45. And uh, we get a fold and then a call. One caller and we are headed to a turn which comes down the ace of clubs. We're gonna go ahead and bet this one for value and I choose a size of $115. Our opponent thinks about it for a little bit but ultimately decides that he cannot afford that price or will not afford that price and he goes ahead and lays it down. So we're scooping a pot. We find ourselves in the big blind for this one. Ace of spades, jack of spades, button limps, small blind calls. We make it 45 and they both decide to call and we're going three ways to our flop, which comes down looking nice for us. We've got the ace of diamonds, king of diamonds, seven of clubs. I'm going to continue on this one and I bet $65. 
The button calls and the small blind decides he is not going to stick around. So we go to the turn. The turn is the queen of spades. I still like where I'm at. I've got the straight draw plus top pair. I'm going to make another bet. I bet $175. I actually think the bet size is a little too large. I think this is a mistake and I wish I had just chosen a little bit different sizing. Now we have pocket sixes. We're in middle position. And yes, we're near the bottom of our range, but we are not afraid. We're going to make it $30 in the big blind calls he wants to dance. We're going to a flop, which comes down pretty decent for our range, okay for our hand. It is ace, three, four. And uh, I could bet here or check. I decide I'm going to check and uh, try to pot control a little bit. We get to the turn, which is the six of clubs. And now our opponent decides he wants to lead out into this pot for $40. Oh, you picked the wrong time, sir. So now we have to decide if we want to raise or just go ahead and call. I'm going to call, and the reason is that I think the hands that have value are going to continue to bet on the river. Uh, I think the bluffs are also going to continue to bet, and so I, I think I can get more money by just calling here. So I call, we have to dodge a spade, we have one in our hand. It's the nine of clubs, that looks fantastic. And even better news, our opponent bets 125. So now let's target that ace, uh, all the ace X combos, maybe like an ace 10, ace jack, and let's see if we can get some value. The pot is now just shy of $300. I'm gonna go ahead and make it $300 total. And so he only has to put in another 175 to call. I'm giving him pretty good odds here, and I think he can call with an ace and uh, maybe even an under pair, but I think he's gonna get away from everything that's not an ace. And ultimately, our opponent thinks about it for a little while and decides on a fold. Every half an hour in the King's Lounge, they're collecting time. And when they do that, we play a double board bomb pot. Tons of fun. So we go to two boards with queen of diamonds, eight of diamonds, and we flop two flush draws with an open-ended straight draw as well on the bottom. This feels pretty good. And it checks around to my right, who is also middle position. Adam, he is a double board bomb pot warlock. Adam, I feel like you need to disclose that to people in the future. It's an unfair advantage. All right, so he bets $100 into this pot. Uh, I think about this one for a little bit. I could call or raise. I'm going to choose to raise because it gives me a chance to win the pot now. And if Adam does call, I think we're going to be able to see the turn and the river for free since we're the aggressor here on the flop. So it comes back around. Everyone folds to Adam. And Adam doesn't think for too long before putting us to the test, choosing door number three instead, which is the all-in move. Uh, I find myself in uncharted waters and decide that I'm gonna have to trust my intuition, which has never failed me before. Just booked our vacation, babe. 2020 is gonna be a great year. Woo! Uh, after a while, I decide to make the call and the runouts are terrible. <laughs> uh, we get the bad news. Adam has five, eight, and made a pair and a straight. He gets us for all our chips and we are felted here in the early goings. We reload and we're back with pocket nines in the cutoff, a thousand in our stack. And we're going against the button in this hand who is a competent player. I make it 30, he decides to three bet to $100 and we're gonna call with pocket nines. The flop comes down king, queen, king with two spades. I'm gonna check to him and he bets $50, uh, about a quarter of the pot, and for that price, I just can't be letting go of my pocket pairs. I'm gonna call at least once and see what develops on the turn. But if he slows down or continues to bet extremely small, I might be able to stick around. I decide to check on the three of diamonds, and he checks back. His check back means he probably doesn't have a king. He may have a queen. It's also possible that he has like an ace high hand or a different pocket pair. The six of clubs comes down on the river. I check again and our opponent checks back as well. We turn over the nines and whatever he had was not as good as pocket nines. I start the camera a little late on this one, but we have 10-8 suited and we get a raise in early position. We make the call. Flop comes 10-8 ace. We've got uh, two pair with an ace high board. This is fantastic news. It checks to us and I'm gonna go ahead and bet $50. We're three ways on this one. So let's hope we can get a call. The button pretty quickly puts $50 out there and is ready to keep playing. So we go to the turn now, and the turn comes down a four of hearts. That was great for us, and we're gonna go ahead and make another move. I'm gonna double what I did last time and go for $100, which is, again, about half pot. So 
I bet $100, and my opponent on the button doesn't think before throwing his money in. He's someone I've been trying to play with. He's a little more recreational. The three is a beautiful banana on the river. It doesn't bring in anything other than deuce five. Please, please don't have deuce five. Anyway, I'm gonna go for value, and I go ahead and reach for chips, betting $250. Let's see if we can get a call. It takes him no time at all, and he decides to put the chips in. We turn it over, and he had a strong ace, but we're good. For this hand, we have pocket queens, and we're playing against Adam, who was our double board bomb pot warlock from earlier. He opens the 30 on the button. I'm gonna see what his skills are like on a single board. I raise to $110 with pocket queens in the small blind. Flop comes down five of clubs, nine of clubs, five of spades. This looks fantastic for our hand. I bet $100 and he makes the call. He's gonna have some flush draws, some over cards. He's gonna occasionally have a nine. He's gonna have like sevens, eights, tens, and jacks. So quite a few things we can get value from. Turn comes down another nine. I'm not extremely concerned about this. His range is gonna be weighted heavily towards uh, higher Broadway cards when he calls that three bet. So I'm gonna continue. I bet $150. Also, I think a lot of his ace high hands are willing to call here because they'll expect to split a fair amount. So he does make the call. Uh, we go to the river and the river is the jack of spades. I check, this now brings in a flush which is unlikely but possible. Uh, he now would have a boat if he had jacks and a nine or a five also makes a boat on the unlikely chance that he has one of those. I check to him, he bets $500 and I think about this for quite a while. I think he's gonna do this with a lot of aces and try, where he just thinks we're splitting and wants to steal it. Uh, I think he can also do this with club draws that have missed. And this is kind of a close spot. He's got a fair number of bluffs. Uh, I don't think he's doing this with like sevens, eights, anything like that. Um, so I think he's gonna be checking those back. It's a pretty gross spot and I'm just gonna have to try to trust my instincts on this one. Sometimes people talk about poker instincts and where they come from. I think it's partially practiced and partially inherited. I smoke one pipe a day because I feel like it's the secret to youth. <laughs> I end up making the call and he turns over an ace, but then he also turns over a five. He flopped the trips, turned the boat, and took me to Value Town. It feels horrendous. I ran this one through his solver because I was pretty frustrated by it. Solver does show a call, so it makes me feel only just barely any better, but at least it wasn't an egregious error. It's that time again. Time for another double board bomb pot. We have eight fives suited for this one and we're on the button. The board comes down ace, eight, four, rainbow, and four, seven, 10, rainbow. So we've got a gutter ball on one board and we have a pair on the other. The small blind bets $30 into 100 and it folds around to me. For 30% of the pot here, I mean, it's, it's such a small bet. I decide that I'm gonna make the call here. I'm in position and there's a lot of cards that I can turn that'll make things more interesting. Plus, we don't know which board he's betting, and the only thing that matches up right now is a four. The turn comes down an eight on the bottom, so we make a set and an ace of spades on the top, adding a flush to our straight draw. He bets now $120. Now I'm definitely sticking around, and I make the call for $120. We go to the river, which is a six of spades to complete our flush on the top, and a two of clubs to leave us with a really strong hand on the bottom. Feels like we're gonna be taking this whole one down, especially when he checks to us. I assemble a bet of $275 for value, and the good news is, he makes the call. The bad news is, he has a better kicker with an eight, he has jack eight, so he takes the bottom, we take the top, we essentially chop our own money up with a very, very small profit. That's just the way this trip has gone so far. This is a strange one. I get pocket tens, and I make a raise to $30. There are two calls, and it gets around to the small blind, who now raises to $180. I think about it for a little bit and decide that I'm gonna call because we're gonna be able to see a flop. I'm not sure what my other opponents are gonna do, but chances are they are not raising. It's pretty rare for somebody to flat call the initial raise and then decide that they wanna raise again. So I go ahead and call $180, but of course, Somehow, the button now makes it $380. Gets back to the small blind who jams, and I have to fold here, there's no way I'm good. If they both have ace-king, maybe. 
but otherwise, chances are someone has kings or aces. So I, uh, I end up making the fold. He calls, and it's aces versus kings I would not have held. So just the way we're running today. Later on in the day, we get queen of spades, jack of spades. I'm in the small blind with 650. The middle position opens. I call. The flop comes queen, 10, 8, rainbow. And we decide to check this one through. The turn is a seven of spades, and I'm gonna bet $35. He ends up making the call, and the river comes the three of hearts. I think you wanna go one more time for value. Try to get value from like uh, something like a 10 or uh, maybe a small pocket pair, something like that. So I go ahead and bet $65. He calls, and it turns out that we are good. What's up guys? Uh, let's see, this is the end of day two. <clears throat> and I just got out of the shower. Turns out you can't uh, wash away sadness with a shower. <laughs> but I had to try, that was pretty miserable.